guys. So I'm Kathleen Bell, as you know, and um, the topic of my proposal is a correlational study of laryngopharyngeal reflux, symptomology, and the voice range profile in singers. As many of you know, I am obsessed with learning about acid reflux. So this is part of my obsession. We're trying to figure out, is there a relationship to what we feel and the acoustic measures that we can record? So what I've done with this proposal is the beginning is talking a lot about um, acid reflux, specifically laryngopharyngeal reflux, or LPR. I'm just going to say LPR from now on because it's really too many words. So um, what is distinctive about LPR versus um, GERD, or gastrointestinal reflux disease? So there are many differences um, that we can talk about. And so I'm talk about that in the proposal, but a couple of things to keep in mind is that um, LPR is basically reflux that affects the larynx. Um, Jamie Kaufman has now coined a new phrase, which is not actually in this proposal, but it's interesting. They're starting to call it respiratory reflux, which I think has a lot of merit. And for us as singers, we probably would really resonate with that um, new terminology, and it's a whole lot easier to say, which is cool. So anyway, um, LPR affects the larynx, and what happens is it's not necessarily acid going all the way up into the throat, but it is pepsin that is being activated, and it is destroying parts of the um, mucosal lining. So for uh, us, that is extremely problematic. So I talk about in the proposal the different um, typical symptoms of uh, acid reflux, and often people will say, but I don't feel any burning sensation, but yet they have this strange cough that won't go away. They have um, voice breaks, or parts of their range is diminished. Um, there might also be um, quality differences. They might not be able to sing as softly as they normally can. Or maybe um, when they sing higher, the voice feels thready. So um, what I propose to do is to talk about um, these differences, talk about um, how we can measure the voice. And, and the acoustic measures that I'm most concerned with is um, uh, how low can you sing and how softly can you sing at that pitch and then how um, how loudly you can sing that low pitch and then also is there a change in your voice uh, with the where your passaggio is between um, chest voice and head voice and then again in the high range how softly can you sustain a pitch and how loudly can you sustain the pitch so what I propose to do, and what I've already started doing, um, is uh, using a special um, voice profiler that we have in the voice lab and having singers come in and we'll do a voice range profile and then, uh, and then we will measure uh, what's going on with the voice, have them do uh, sing from high to low as softly and as loudly as they can in different parts of the range or through the entire range and then also compare that with um, talking about their reflux symptoms. So the reflux symptom index is really important and this was developed by um, Belasky and a whole other um, guys which you'll find in the paper that I can't think off the top of my head right now. But there are questions, and I'm going to just look right now um, at sample questions, like hoarseness or a problem with your voice, clearing your throat, um, excess mucus or post-nasal drip. Um, you might have this sense that something is in there. It has a fancy name, globulus. Um, this troublesome, annoying cough um, or a tickle in the throat. And then, of course, um, heartburn, um, chest pain, 
indigestion. These are all symptoms of reflux. So what they've done is they've made this um, index and it has these questions and you write from zero to five how, um, how much you experience those symptoms, five being the worst. And so the higher the number you have total, the worse it is. And what they have, um, studies that they've done say that at least 13 or more is probably indicative that you have reflux. Now here's the problem. Allergies can give you much the same symptoms. Premenstrual syndrome can give you much the same symptoms. Uh, vocal pathologies can give you much the same symptoms. So is this the only way to diagnose? No, but this is how we, um, this is one tool, and this is how we experience um, our voices. What I've also done is I've um, developed a singer-specific questionnaire with actually Robert Sadoloff. And these are very specific questions that we would resonate with as singers. And so these are questions like change in your voice quality, especially if it's in the morning. That's pretty typical for people with reflux, but it's also pretty typical with people with allergies. Um, prolonged warm-up time needed for the voice. So if it normally takes you 10 minutes to warm up, but you had some reflux, it might take you 20 or 30 minutes. Um, reduced pitch range. Is, is this a symptom that could be caused by other things? Yeah. Um, voice break, um, voice fatigue, and very importantly, difficulty in producing soft sounds. Now, many of you with bigger voices may say, I've always had a problem producing soft sounds. So is this indicative of reflux? Maybe you've always had reflux. I don't know. Um, they are finding that children have reflux, babies have reflux. So it could be something there, or it could not. So I propose to see, is there a relationship between what we feel and what we can acoustically measure? I hope that there is, and that's what I claim to see. That's my dog. My dog agrees. Okay, so anyway, um, that's what the study is about. I do want to give you a couple of um, names to remember. Jonathan Aviv, um, Jamie Kaufman, and Robert Sadoloff. These are the big gurus in the reflux um, uh, debate, reflux um, conversation, and I'm hoping to be one of those people talking about that. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy my proposal, and um, have a good break.